it says the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame. Its wheels as a burning fire. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. Imagine this scene. Let your mind grasp it. Ten thousand times ten thousand gather in heaven's courts. The whole universe is there present at this universal cosmic judgment. God is on trial. And God reveals in that test before the whole universe that he's done everything he can to save every human being. God reveals that there's nothing more that he could do to save human beings. God's love is on display. God's character is on trial. And in the judgment, the whole universe gathers. Now, when does this judgment take place? Could it be that we are living in the judgment hour? Could it be that heaven's court has gathered? Could it be that the books are opened and the court is set? If that is true, if Revelation and Daniel combine these two great prophetic books, teach us that we're living in the judgment hour, then that drives us to our needs. It drives us to faith in Christ and to commit ourselves totally to him. The Bible talks about the fact that before Jesus comes, and we've mentioned it, that he would, when he comes, he'd give out his reward. So before he comes, there must be this universal judgment. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, we have the timing of that judgment. Daniel 7 reveals the judgment would take place in heaven. Daniel 7 doesn't say anything about the timing of the judgment. Daniel 8, 14 describes the timing of that judgment. Unto 2,300 days, then the sanctuary will be cleansed. Now notice, there's a time period and there is an event. The time period, unto 2,300 days. The event, and then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. But you say, that seems rather strange. What is this cleansing of the sanctuary? What does the cleansing of the sanctuary mean? What is the cleansing of the sanctuary all about? How does that relate to the judgment? And what about these 2,300 days? 2,300 days from Daniel's time certainly wouldn't take us down to the time of the end. So let's try to explore the answer to some of those questions. First, what does the cleansing of the sanctuary mean? In Exodus chapter 25, verse 8, the Bible takes us back to the building of a sanctuary in the wilderness. It says, let them make me a sanctuary that I might dwell among them. There was an earthly sanctuary built in Old Testament times. That earthly sanctuary was a scale model of the great sanctuary in heaven. The earthly sanctuary revealed the varying phases of the plan of salvation. In the earthly sanctuary, we are able to understand Jesus' work as sacrifice, Jesus' work as priest, and also the final judgment. So when the Bible says, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed, it's necessary to understand the working of the Old Testament sanctuary and what cleansing meant there, so we will understand this cleansing of the sanctuary or this judgment at end time. When you come to the sanctuary in the Old Testament, it was really divided into three parts. There was an outer court. It was to that outer court that sinners brought their sacrifices. Once the sacrifice was slain in the outer court, the priest entered into the holy place of the sanctuary and sprinkled the blood before the veil. Behind that veil was the most holy place where the law of God was enshrined. Let's walk through that sanctuary. Let's suppose that here's a sinner. This sinner has gotten an argument. This sinner has become uh, one who has stolen from a friend. This sinner has become one who's been critical in the camp. The Holy Spirit convicts him. Recognizing his sin, 
he must come with an offering. The offering could be a lamb without spot or blemish. Rulers might bring a bullock. Poor people might bring a grain offering. So, but an offering must be brought. You might say grain offering, no blood. Well, there was a morning and evening sacrifice in which blood was shed shed in the sanctuary for people that were too poor to have an animal sacrifice. You see, the sanctuary system provided salvation for all humanity. And so the lamb was brought by the sinner. The sinner places his hands over the head of the lamb, and then the sinner's guilt as he confessed his sin or her the sin was symbolically transferred to the perfect lamb. So the person, for example, has stolen something. Of course, he must return that which he's stolen. But the sinner places his hands over the head of the lamb, says, Dear Jesus, I've stolen. Dear Jesus, I've been selfish. Dear Jesus, I've been greedy. Dear Jesus, forgive me, O oh Father. Sin is transferred via guilt to that lamb. And as it is, the lamb then must be slain, but the sinner slays the lamb. Sin is so bad that it causes the death of its victim. Our sin is so bad that it causes the death of Jesus Christ. When we come with the burden of sin, when we come with the guilt of sin, when we come with the shame of sin, when we come condemned and we confess our sins, the Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to do what? To do what, everybody? To forgive our sins. Just as the sinner came with a burden, confessed their sin over the head of the lamb, and the guilt was transferred to the lamb, so our guilt is transferred to our lamb, Jesus. The priest then would take the blood of that sacrifice. Some of the sacrifice would be burned at the altar in the court. The priest would wash his hands, take the blood into the holy place, sprinkle that blood before the veil, so all year, sin is being transferred into the sanctuary. The sinner confesses his sin over the head of the lamb. The guilt is transferred to the lamb. The blood is shed. The record of the sin is in the blood. The blood is, goes into the sanctuary. And it's sprinkled before the veil, before the law of God in that most holy place. It's sprinkled before the veil between the holy and the most holy. Sin is transferred into the sanctuary, representing that Jesus offers the merits of his blood in heaven on our behalf. We come burdened. We come filled with guilt and shame. We confess our sin. And as we do, it's transferred through the cross and by the blood Jesus, our high priest, takes it to the heavenly sanctuary and he says before the universe, this man, this woman, this child is one of mine. Their sins are forgiven and he intercedes for us there. He intercedes for us before that law that was broken. He intercedes for us there in heaven before the very throne of the living God. Once a year in the Jewish sanctuary, there was something called the Day of Atonement. All of Israel gathered around the camp. It was a day of judgment. It was the day of the cleansing of the sanctuary. All year, sin had been transferred in. But now, sin would be taken from the sanctuary. Two goats would be chosen. One was called the Lord's goat, the other the scapegoat. The Lord's goat and the scapegoat. We find there, in that service, the service known as the cleansing of the sanctuary. Blood was shed of the one goat. No guilt, no shame, no condemnation could be atoned for without the blood of Christ. The high priest brought that blood now once a year not simply into the holy place but into the most holy place sprinkled it before the very throne of god then left the sanctuary and put all the guilt all the shame on that scapegoat satan that would forever be separated from the people of god now when the high priest entered the most holy place in this special work on the Day of Atonement, this special work called the cleansing of the sanctuary, all of Israel gathered around. 
they opened their hearts they prayed they sought God so what was the cleansing of the sanctuary in ancient Israel it was a day of judgment because any Israelite that did not confess their sin would be cut off from Israel every Israelite had to examine their heart every Israelite had to be sure that their life was right with God every Israelite had to fall on their knees in repentance this was the day of judgment this was the day of atonement this was Yom Kippur this was indeed a day of the cleansing of the sanctuary so in the sanctuary services there were really two services there was the daily service lambs are slain a sin is transferred from the sinner to the lamb through the blood into the sanctuary once a year in the yearly service the high priest enters the most holy place cleansing of the sanctuary sin then is brought from the sanctuary placed on the origin of evil the scapegoat who's separated from god's people forever one day satan the one who's responsible for sin will take the consequences of sin and be destroyed forever and ever and ever just like that scapegoat was brought out into the wilderness the bible says daniel 8 verse 14 for 2300 days then the sanctuary be cleansed what is the cleansing of the sanctuary at the end of time it is the final judgment that condemns satan and condemns sin forever and ever the day of atonement was an illustration of god's judgment in the heavenly sanctuary that will occur just before Jesus comes again but you say wait a minute the 2300 days 2300 literal days is a little more than six years that doesn't take us down to the end of time and doesn't the angel Gabriel in Daniel chapter 8 say to Daniel Daniel I'll help you to understand the vision it'll apply to the time of the end he does Daniel 8 verse 16 Daniel 8 verse 27 the vision would apply to the time of the end what then is the sense of this 2300 days these are prophetic symbols let's look at them what's the meaning of the 2300 days this is one of the most amazing this is one of the most incredible this is one of the most remarkable prophecies in all the bible because it shares the exact date that christ would be baptized it shares the exact date christ would be crucified it shares the exact date that the gospel would go from the jews including the jews of course to the gentiles and it shares when god's judgment would begin at end time it is a remarkable prophecy it's mathematically precise it's minutely accurate let's journey together the angel gabriel in daniel 8 verse 16 and 17 says gabriel make this man understand the vision what was gabriel's task to make daniel understand the vision at the end of chapter 8 in verse 27 and onward daniel faints and he do, does not understand the vision the scripture says so when he came near where i stood and when he came near i was afraid fell on my face but he said to me understand son of man for the vision refers what is the vision refer to everybody the time of the end so the vision of the 2300 days the vision of the cleansing of the sanctuary does not apply to daniel's time what time does it apply to again the time of the end it would take us down to end time now 2300 literal days does not take us down to end time ezekiel was a contemporary of daniel and ezekiel says in ezekiel 4 verse 6 i have laid on you a day for each year in bible prophecy one prophetic day represents one literal year if the bible gives us the starting point for this 2300 days or 2300 what everybody years then we can easily calculate the ending point now somebody says how do you know the day year principle applies how do you know that one prophetic day equals one literal year in this prophecy that says unto 2300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed how do you know the day your principle applied two ways first 
the angel Gabriel doesn't make mistakes. And he says the prophecy would take a stand in the time of the end. Obviously, 2,300 days from Daniel's time would just take you down uh, a few years, not even to the days of Media in Persia that overcame Babylon. So...